It cost the equivalent of $670 billion and left the U.S. government riddled with debt. So how exactly did America pay for the Civil War? Both the Union and Confederacy used a variety of methods to fund their war efforts, which required huge amounts of cash. In the well-established Industrial North, independent banks and wealthy businessmen with a stake in the Union shipped in with loans to get the U.S. war machine moving. But it soon became clear that a more reliable and sophisticated fundraising system was needed. So under the Secretary of the Treasury, Salmon P. Chase, the U.S. government started creating a new currency known as greenbacks to stimulate the northern economy. It issued bonds, which allowed private citizens to invest in the war effort. It raised taxes and created a new type of national bank that helped create a stronger financial foundation across the North. As a result, by 1865, the U.S. was able to fund its military to the tune of $3.5 million a day. In contrast, the Confederacy struggled to compete. Having scrambled together a Treasury Department, its secretary, Christopher Memminger, could not hope to match the Union's rising bank balance. The Confederacy issued its own currency. It sold cotton bonds to its supporters in Europe and seized food, fuel, and enslaved people through a policy known as impressment. But these efforts did more harm than good, leading to spiraling inflation and public resentment. Naturally resistant to the idea of centralized government, many Southerners chose to keep their money to themselves. So why does it matter? Although the Confederacy was able to raise the equivalent of $438 million, in the end, it wasn't enough. As one former Confederate put it in the wake of defeat, the Yankees did not whip us on the field. We were whipped in the Treasury Department. How should the price of war be spread across society?